Welcome back folks, this is Steve KM9G and today we have a new watt meter. This is a digital, haha, ha, told you, it's already out of the box. This is a digital watt meter MFJ849. There's also a Nisei branded version of this. I'll leave a link to both of them in the description down below. Let's go over to the bench and tear this thing apart. I want to see what's inside of it. This is the MFJ 849. One of these days I'm going to have to figure out what these numbers actually mean. But today is not that day. Today is the day that we tear apart the digital SWR watt meter. One of the things I like about this is it's got a big digital numbers display instead of a sweep meter. And that's important to me. So let's see what we can do about getting this case off. Let's see what's inside. All right, those are recessed, so you gotta spread it out a little bit to slide it up. No problem there. And not a whole lot going on inside, which is what I kind of expected. We have RF shielded inputs and outputs, HF and UHF, VHF inputs, a couple of trimmers to get this thing tuned even more if you had a reference standard, so that's pretty nice. Big old switch. This switch here reminds me a lot of the switches that you find in the old Commodore 64s with the pin configuration on it. So if you just want to open it up to do the calibration, then you just need those four screws, two on each side. If you want to take this part here off, then you need the rest of those screws. Okay, and so this is the Nisei DG103B circuit board in here, which is what I thought I was going to find. We have a 7805 voltage regulator, inputs from this board to that board. That makes sense. And this is a Holtec HT1621B. We'll have to take a look and see what that thing does. And then on the other side is just the LCD display. That is it for what is inside. I'm going to go one level deeper because I can. Okay, so we have a polarization filter. Is that polarized? And then we have the, this is what I thought I was going to find over here. We have the LED display, LCD display. This circuit board here where the SO239s connect goes straight through this board and then is held in place with some solder. That's a pretty neat design. And then it gets held in place behind the front panel. And on my unit, this, this little tab here was actually pushing this front panel cover out. Now I know why. All right, like I said, there's not going to be much on the front side of this except for the LCD panel. So let's put her back together. Put that power switch back in right away before we forget it. You guys can see that I forgot this. Back in we go. All right, and then for the front panel, there's two screws in the bottom and two screws on the side. One of the things that I'm going to need is another piece of coax to go from the radio to this because this already goes out to the antenna system. And this is the Andrew Comscope CB radio coax, two feet. And I have had a lot of good luck with this. Crimped on ends. And this is CNT240. You probably won't see that on the camera. This is a slightly more flexible version of LMR240 if you're looking for a specs reference on it. There'll be a link for this in the description down below. All right, let's give you a quick tour of the station here. We have the venerable ICOM IC7300. We have the MFJ994B tuner set up. Probably not going to use that much. We have the WSJTX laptop running to repeat a test that we did last time. 
Here is the new meter, the MFJ849. There is the old meter, which is the MFJ267 dummy load. We're gonna switch that into the dummy load position, then we're gonna do some tests. Let me get the camera set up again. Okay, one of the first principles of any testing is that you should set a baseline to make sure that everything works before you introduce some new testing things. I have cabled this in, so I am introducing something new, but what I wanna do is get the radio configuration rolling and see that this meter still reads the same. So we're gonna hit the tune button, and we are up here, but you can't tell, depending on which angle that you're looking at the, the meter, as to whether that's showing 125 or it's showing 120 or what. It's not, it's not terribly precise, but it is showing the same thing that it was showing in the last test where we are getting out more power than what we would expect. So let's make sure that this is set to the HF side. Let's turn it on for the first time together. Oh, I didn't push it in hard enough. 503 watts out, that's nice. That's just the number that it gives you when it's displayed. So already, this is a huge meter. This thing looks fantastic, and it's very easy to read from a distance. Let's see what it says when we put some power to it. 103, okay, so this was off a little bit compared to this one. I really don't know which one's accurate. Now I have two things that are telling me two different numbers, and it could be that both of them are not accurate. 102.91 so it is moving and it's moving in hundredths which is good and then how long okay so it sits there for a little bit once you're done that's nice that it holds it for a couple of seconds there let's switch over to 80 meters we're at 111 so 111 watts out with a one-to-one -one SWR of course it's perfect let's reach back and turn the dummy load off and now we will have a bad SWR yeah 75 and 10 reflected which is pretty bad and this meter here is showing me that it's a little over 7 to 1 all right, so 80, 40, 30, and 20. And those are the bands that we tested on the QDX in the previous video. Let's recable this and get the QDX set in. Give me a moment to redo that. Okay, we are reconfigured with the QDX in place. And then we have our new meter and our old meter side by side, just like the last time. Let's put this thing into 80 meters and see what we get. 2.48, that's not good. Let's go to 40 meters, see what we get. 1.97, getting worse. Let's go to 30. 2.64, let's go to my favorite band, 20. 2.29, all right, we got some work to do to get some more power out of this thing. Okay, folks, so you saw the results. I expected them to be different. The 267 is a needle-based meter. This is a digital meter, so this has a numeric display. And which one is more accurate, which one is more precise? I don't care. I, I have no way of knowing. I don't have the budget or the time or the desire to have that kind of reference level equipment at this point in my ham journey. I may later, I may find something, I don't know. But right now where I'm at is I want to know the difference. And if this thing registers 2.9 watts and then I go through my procedure to adjust my radio and it measures 3.9 watts, I know that there's been a one watt change. That's what I need. I need to see the change. And I like the fact that it's a nice big display and I can see it from a little bit farther away. And I also like the fact that it's digital because with a analog meter, they're pretty, I like them, with a needle-based meter, depending on how you look at the meter, you get a different result. And when we're talking about 2.97 versus 2.99 versus 3.01, they all look the same. And if I look down, it looks like five. <laughs> so that's why I wanted this. This is gonna be a fantastic addition to the shack. We're gonna use this in a lot of upcoming videos. There are links in the description down below where to get this watt meter, the fantastic Kyrites KM601 multimeter that you saw me use earlier for continuity checking on the power poles, the power pole connectors, all of this stuff. There's a smorgasbord of stuff in the description down below just in case you happen to need some of this stuff and wanna know where to get it. There's also also, bonus, well, it's not really a bonus. It happens in every video. There's a video right over here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. We'll see you in the next one.